I'm going to call this meeting of the City Council Public Safety and Emergency Services Committee to order. I'm John Sharp, Councilman from the 6th District. I'm Chair of the Committee. To my right is the Committee Vice Chair, Councilman Jermaine Reed from the 3rd District. And to my left is a member of the Committee, Councilman Michael Brooks from the 5th District. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the first item, item of business? South Patrol Division update, Major Carl Oakman. Major, welcome. Come on up here and have a seat, if you would. And Look great in your dress uniform today. No. Oh, I thank you. Uh, <laughs> good morning to all the members of the committee. Uh, it always seems like when I, when I come that I've been gone for a long period of time. Um, South Patrol, uh, start off with our uh, crime updates. Um, as far as robberies, we've seen a slight decrease from this period last year. Uh, Although slight, it's still a decrease, which is always good news. Uh, no change on our homicides. We've had uh, two in the month of January. Uh, one of those was a domestic violence related. Uh, and the other I'll talk about uh, in a few moments. Uh, ag assaults, this is, this is good news. Uh, ag assaults are down 41%. Aggravated assaults. Aggravated assaults. Uh, which means uh, any type of uh, assault, usually involving a weapon. Uh, we had, last year in January, we had 29. Uh, this month, we had, this January of 2013, we ended up with 17. So uh, that's good news. As always, there's always a chance of ag assaults leading eventually to homicide. So that's, that's good. That's good news. Um, our biggest increase, however, we've seen was from theft from autos. Uh, and there's two, there's two isolated incidents that uh, accounted or attributed to that increase. One, um, about last weekend, two weekends ago, we had about, there was a 27 catalytic converters stolen um, from several businesses believe it or not, in the, on the same block where the old South Patrol station um, used to be. Uh, and we had literally no crime there until we moved out. So what we, we do have um, some pretty good leads, and we think we've identified uh, some suspects in those uh, stealings. Uh, the other was in southeast Kansas City where we had uh, several police cars broken into uh, on one night at a county. And going back to the weekend, there was a total of about seven. Um, and we, we still, we have some good information on that. Detectives have been running down information from the TIPS hotline and we, we think we've developed a few suspects. So that, that's an ongoing investigation. And, uh, and that includes some sheriffs? Uh, yeah, also, it, it also included my car. Yeah, so, and, and, and they, they didn't get anything out of the KCPD cars because we don't keep any um, valuable stuff in our vehicles. So, learned that a long time ago. Um, I think they did get some uh, yeah, from, firearms. Yeah, uh, from Jackson uh, from County. And, County uh, Sheriff's. What we're thinking cars. is they, they hit the Sheriff's cars um, that, that Friday and um, got some weapons out of there, so they figured, okay, let's, you know, we got the cash cow there. Let's see if we can hit some more cars. But um, we've got some um, measures in place as well as some extra patrol and some some other things that I really can't, can't go into. But uh, hopefully in the next uh, month or two, we'll, we'll get a uh, suspect on that. Um, and officers are continuing. Also of note, in December, um, we arrested a individual for rape who had been responsible for about four rapes that have occurred uh, last year going back to uh, early March in South Patrol and uh, DNA connected him to four of the rapes and this was one guy that we had been hot after uh, because not only was he raping the victims he was also robbing them and a couple occurred around Hillcrest Community Center. So that's good news. He's in custody, and um, we haven't seen any uh, any new 
um, offenses since he's been in custody. Uh, also, we're, we're continuing to maintain a presence in Ruskin. Uh, however, we have noticed slight increases of crime moving to the north uh, between Bannister and 87th Street. So we've uh, made the adjustment and uh, we've kind of identified kind of what the issues are and we, we've, we've moved resources in that direction. Um, school update um, with, with the latest attention about schools and school shootings. Um, we've always kept a contact list of the schools uh, in South Patrol, but what we've done is we've actually identified every physical school building because in the past we have information with the districts. Now we're making contact with every physical school building in South Patrol, which is 33 schools to include five colleges. And, and what we're doing is we're contacting the principals or the person responsible for the building directly, um, making face-to-face -face contact, exchanging information, and eventually we'll put together a cell phone and um, email database. Um, as well as um, I attended a meeting on Monday with the Hickman Mill School District. and. Uh, and I'm not just saying this because I'm the South Patrol Division Commander, but I think the Hickman Mill School District and South Patrol has probably the best relationship of any um, division and school district in the city. Um, and we met and they, they called a special uh, board meeting, had um, Jackson County Sheriff Mike Sharp, uh, Police Chief of Grandview and myself, and we discussed um, different um, ways to continue to improve on the safety and security of the school district and the neighborhood um, around the school district. And, uh, and it was, <clears throat> we also just discussed some other things about actual crime as opposed to the fear of crime. And we, a lot of the board members felt had a real sense of fear of crime in that area and when we, um, showed them the data, they realized it was more a um, fear of crime. And one of the issues with that school district is, is that they're very transparent, so they let their community know what's going on. So every incident that happens, the community as well as the community groups are aware of it. And, um, and that, that's a good thing, but the, the, the negative side to it is, for instance, if if you hear of a incident occurring at Red Bridge and Blue Ridge, it's mentioned there was an incident, you know, just to the west of Ruskin High School, whereas you may have a homicide at Independence and in Chelsea, but there's no mention of like Northeast High School and some of the other high schools. It's just because of where Ruskin is situated in the community. Um, also on the community front, um, we will be having a drug buyback at the new South Patrol Division on April 27th from 10 to 2 p.m. where um, you can bring in your prescription drugs, your over-the-counter drugs, no marijuana, no cocaine. We don't, don't bring in any drugs like that because uh, we may take you if you bring those kind of drugs. <laughs> but all we're looking for is over-the-counter drugs and prescription drugs. Um, but if you, if you do have information on that, um, we can always talk to you and uh, follow up on that. And one more, one more thing of note on, on the drug issue. Um, South Patrol, um, we are continuing to experience problems with uh, marijuana. That appears to be the drug of choice out south. And I know there's, <clears throat> if you look in the media, that people feel that marijuana is, you know, a mild drug and it doesn't create violence and uh, that's not true. Actually, two of our last three homicides going back to December at South Patrol was involving marijuana and that's what we're starting to see. Uh, the marijuana related homicides are now replacing the crack related homicides. So uh, marijuana is not an innocent drug, drug as we may see in the media because wherever there's money and illegal um, drugs, uh, there's going to be violence, regardless of what you're, what you're selling or what you're dealing. Uh, and also, um, the community rooms, 
Um, the community is taking advantage of them where our rooms are getting uh, booked just about every week and um, we're, we're uh, making new community contacts through that, um, uh, recognizing people that uh, we really didn't even know existed in the community. They're, they're coming into the station, uh, booking the room and um, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. And uh, that's all I have for South Patrol if you have any questions. Well, thank you, Major. Uh, greatly appreciate everything you're doing out there and, and certainly appreciate you being at the meeting uh, Monday with Hickman Mills uh, School Board. Uh, uh, the school board president, Bremen Anderson, uh, uh, was, was very uh, pleased to, to, to get that kind of cooperation from all the area law enforcement agencies to make sure that our students in the Hickman Mills area are, are kept as safe as possible. And, and I know uh, you have uh, school resource officers in uh, uh, the secondary schools out there and, and uh, I know just having them available not only uh, provides a safer environment but they've oftentimes been tipped off of, about dangerous situations from the students because they have that kind of relationship. Yeah, they also have two uh, officers that roam to the 10 elementary schools in Hickman Mills throughout the day. Um, so that's, that's a plus. Well, and I'm pleased that uh, no firearms were taken in, in the break-ins of uh, our, our police cars because uh, I know there were at least some assault rifles taken from the, the deputy sheriff's cars that were broken into. And so that was a very serious situation. I'm glad you have some leads. And on uh, the day when people can bring their prescription and over-the-counter drugs that have expired uh, to South Patrol to turn them in. That was April 27th? Yes, April uh, 27th from 10 um, to 2 p.m. The time may change, but right now that's what the scheduled time is for the turn in. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? And we've been joined by our colleague, uh, Councilman Scott Taylor from the 6th District at Large. Uh, Councilman Taylor, welcome. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Major Oakman, uh, thanks for the very comprehensive report, um, as usual. Uh, very good. A um, couple comments. One is on the community room. I'm glad to hear that that's being used. We had... Uh, uh, we saw evidence of uh, what a great location it is, and it's great to create that inter more interaction with the police department at the... Uh, annual uh, uh, South KC Chamber Grandview Joint Chamber meeting. Uh, we had standing room only. I mean, it was uh, packed, and that's a much uh, larger attendance than usual uh, meetings each, each year that, for that type of meeting. So, uh, you know, I think the more we can get the word out uh, for you that, that it's a great meeting facility, it's safe, a uh, good way for, typically we have a few police officers stop in uh, to join the meeting, uh, whichever meeting we've had there. So it's a uh, a good thing. Uh, question for you on, uh, you, you mentioned your interaction with the school districts. That's very positive, and I'd like to, you know, encourage that as much as possible as, as uh, time constraints allow. Uh, one specific thing that's been happening uh, across state line, it hasn't been uh, 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 in the news uh, in, in our side of the state line, but one thing I'm, I'm curious as to whether this is being addressed internally or we're doing preventative measures with the school districts is on the, I think there have been about three cases recently of, of child enticement across state line in, in a couple of school districts uh, of younger students. And I think in many of these cases, the uh, 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 individual involved uh, was not uh, successful in the uh, child enticement, but uh, that they, uh, the children, uh, reacted and, and went uh, away from the person. But the concern is it sounds like these, are, at least what the news is reporting, are different uh, individuals, and it sounds like they haven't been caught yet. And so just because they're on across state line now uh, doesn't mean that they wouldn't come across state line. Are we doing anything? Uh, when, when you see something like that happening, I know it happens all the time, but it just seems like recently there have been more of these, a rash of these kind of happening. Yeah, when, when, that, when that happens, what, what happens is, is that we send a bulletin out across all the uh, school districts. And, and I know in Hickman, um, with the uh, security director there, uh, we keep, we keep uh, a database with all the information. And be, because what, what's happened a couple times, Last year, we had a similar incident, and we were able to identify the car and do some license plate checks. And what 
what we did is we put one of our license plate readers out and what this car does is it goes I think it's up to a mile it'll it'll pick up all the license plates in that um, particular area and we were able to get a make and model of the car um, and what helps with the Higman district is that 50% of the officers that work in the school also work at South Patrol Division and now since each officer has their own personal radio we're able to communicate just as they go on to duty they get on air with the dispatcher the South Patrol dispatcher and let them know what school they're working and so on so we're able to relay that information because we do have several incidents where the kids will come in and say hey this and, and it didn't get that far but they would mention the description of the car something wasn't right about it and then they would let us know and we'll issue a pickup stop the car and uh, identify the occupant so we're kind of we're kind of on top of that um, as it as it as it unfolds that's good to hear I, I appreciate that thank you <clears throat> yes sir thank you mr. chair uh, just a couple of quick questions uh, and then also a comment I'll start with the, well two comments and one question <laughs> um, first comment is uh, that uh, thank you for your presentation today and also uh, thanks for your visibility in the community uh, I've been to several events that have been citywide events out south and uh, you've been there, you've been present and uh, greeting members of the public uh, and working in, uh, with them directly. And so uh, a big thank you to, uh, for that because I think that's uh, extremely important and a lot of times we hear about uh, the interactions with police officers and then them just being uh, there to, you know, cause trouble sometimes depending on who you're talking to. But um, I've seen firsthand your interaction with citizens and I just want to commend you for that and um, your hard work. The second is a quick question here about you mentioned the increase in uh, uh, our, I guess there was some crime that occurred around the area of the old police station. Yes. Um, could you tell me if it's vacant and if there are any future plans to place a tenant in that building or uh, what they're planning to do with that building if you uh, are aware? Yeah, the, the last that I heard of the building is that <clears throat> we were going to uh, return it back to the city and they were going to um, sell that particular building. Um, it, and the building seems to be in pretty good, pretty good shape other than some cosmetic stuff on the interior. But structurally, the building seems to be in pretty good shape as well as the other issue would probably come up with the gas tank that's on the back side of it. I know that that will be an issue when you try to sell it to another tenant. I think it's interesting to hear you say that, you know, nothing, um, there, there was no crimes or anything happened in the area until you all moved. Uh, so I do think that that uh, actually speaks volumes for where actually police stations are uh, placed in communities and what that's what people say about the community and now since it's a vacant shell basically and no one is actually occupying it uh, what people think they can do uh, in the area uh, and the last thing I would basically say is the uh, kind of a plug for our um, budget hearing we've talked about the new police station out there out south uh, in our next well our last budget hearing is going to be out in South Kansas City at that uh, facility um, on the 23rd and that's from 9 until 11 o'clock um, on a Saturday, so Saturday the 23rd, 9 to 11 at the new South Patrol uh, Police Station for our final budget hearing for the public. So I uh, was looking forward to actually seeing the, the building. I haven't had a chance to actually tour it or I uh, was there for the ribbon cutting, but haven't had a chance to actually go in. So looking forward to it. Thank you, Councilman and uh, Major. We certainly uh, uh, want to thank you for your uh, presentation. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned the the theft of the catalytic converters because, as you know, one of the city's uh, legislative priorities that Councilman Wagner has taken the lead on is to try to get stronger state legislation to uh, uh, better uh, deter uh, scra scrap dealers from purchasing stolen items like catalytic converters. And uh, you might want to stick around if you can. I know you're on a uh, tight schedule, but the next presentation will be on how we can really do more to use uh, Channel 2 and the city's website 
to educate people on crime prevention, and, and this idea has been brought to us by our colleagues, uh, Councilman Jim Glover and Councilman Jan Markison. Uh, uh, and, of course, one of the things that has been happening around the city is these kind of car break-ins. And then also I, I'd just like to thank you for uh, making the community room available. When we picked that site for the uh, station and designed it, we wanted to make sure there were adequate community meeting facilities. We just had a meeting Monday night of the South Kansas City Alliance there, so it is being utilized, and we really appreciate it. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Could you read the uh, uh, third item of, of business, Madam Clerk? If you would please. Discussion on how to better utilize Channel 2 and the city's website to promote public safety. And I'd like to ask our two colleagues to, to kind of introduce this because they brought this idea to us and, and we greatly appreciate it. And uh, um, sorry you had to wait a little bit. Uh, uh, we, we got into more questioning of, of the things going on in South Patrol than I anticipated, but we really appreciate you bringing this idea to us. It will help public safety throughout the city. and. I'll turn it over to you, whoever would like to go first. I want to say I would appreciate the major, uh, the South Patrol is going to host our budget uh, hearing on February 23rd. So we are definitely utilizing that spot. And I was interested when he talked about some car break-ins uh, in his report, and that has been an issue that all of our districts uh, face. But according to our wonderful uh, Officer Jim Shriver, who works in the Central Patrol, that's one of the most preventable crimes that we can um, deal with in the city because really it's just a public awareness of take your GPS out of your car, take your computer out of your car, take your purse out of your car. And so um, Councilman Glover and I were at a meeting of the uh, Crossroads neighborhood, and they are, as you know, the creative catalyst for our district and uh, Patrolman Shriver was talking about you know a variety of issues and they said well you know with our uh, creativity maybe we can help the city do something really catchy to inform people about the need to uh, not leave things in their car and prevent this crime from happening, because always prevention is the best way to deal with this, and there's probably no better group of people than the, the creative folks at the crossroads to do something really catchy. Uh, Patrolman Shriver talked about in Minneapolis, they have a, a um, <coughs> campaign called uh, Keep Your Junk in Your Trunk, and so that was catchy, but we thought, you know, that's one option, but the people in the crossroads, you know, they, if, we, if you unleash them, I have a feeling that they could work with the city and do something that's uniquely Kansas City that would be very catchy and that would be really um, just build on uh, what Kansas City is doing in the arts and the creativity. So, Thank you. Um, to add to the comments from my colleague, I want to emphasize that I think this is a national issue, let alone a metropolitan-wide issue. And it's similar to um, what happens during Christmas shopping. A lot of times we'll hear um, the big malls warn people who have bought presents, don't leave them in your car, put them in your trunk so they won't be visible. So it's, it's an issue that pertains throughout the country as well as in the metropolitan area. It's not one specific neighborhood. But where people gather and things are visible in a parked car that are of value, they're attractive. And um, people will uh, cruise parking areas, whether wherever it is, and um, break, break in and grab the, the item. And the easy way to do that is to not put it there in invisible space, but either to put it in the trunk or someplace else. And we do think that um, some folks in, in the Crossroads area that, that wanted to step up when we were talking about this issue for the entire city uh, would like to uh, help. And the ad, we thought, could be a good part of Channel 2's crime prevention, where we could play it on Channel 2 and have a regular spot advising people how to handle this and so we can drive down um, and uh, at least in Kansas City you know I, it wouldn't 
affect the car break-ins in, um, in Lee Summit or Johnson County, uh, which it happens there, you know, but um, they don't have the opportunity to watch Channel 2 because they're not Kansas Cityans. So we would like to educate Kansas Cityans and um, maybe people in Johnson County and Lee Summit can get the message out in other ways. We greatly appreciate you bringing this uh, idea to us. Uh, we're going to hear from Pat Klein and his staff and, and uh, police department staff on ways to implement this. But I think uh, it's fair to say that we have heard that this is a problem from every patrol division that, that uh, comes in and gives us the report. And we know it's a problem uh, metropolitan-wide and nationwide. Even the police had their car and the sheriff's department had things stolen from their cars. So yeah, and it's not just a Kansas City problem. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the site to Minneapolis is very, absolutely. very appropriate. But I'm sure if our suburban areas were um, pulled, we'd find it's a problem there too. Absolutely. Any I think questions? this could be a national. I mean, this could be a national campaign. I mean, I think we could do things so creatively in Kansas City that people would adopt um, our public service announcement. Uh, for many different communities. Well, that'd be great. Any questions for our colleagues? Well, thank you so much for bringing this idea thank to us. We greatly you for appreciate acting it. Acting on it so quickly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Klein, would you care to take it from here? Good morning, Council Members. Patrick Klein with the City Manager's Office. Today I have John Hildebrandt with me in City Communications, Joel is back here from City Communications and we have Steve Young with uh, KCPD. Um, first of all, let me just say that um, we think this is a great idea and we're all um, about doing this partnering and, and getting the word out on communications. It all, this also ties into some of our other stuff that we've got going on in communications and I thought I'd get it, we'd, we'd get everybody kind of involved. Um, Oh, kind of give you an update. So, um, as all of you are aware of, I'm I'm just the acting city uh, communications director. Uh, Dennis Gagnon, great employee, left for his dream job at the University of Missouri. I know it's the University of Missouri. Sorry. Yes. Um, I've got my I've got my purple mean, on today. Come we, on, bud. We won't, we won't go there. Um, the aren't aren't you a K State fan with all that purple? <laughs> <in it>? <laughs> <laughs> So we won't get into that discussion today. Um, currently, we have the job, the director job open. Um, it'll be open until the 19th. I've checked with uh, Human Resources today. They've got 96 applicants already for that job, and it's still open for two more weeks. So I'm hoping that we will have interviews the first couple of weeks of March, and then we will try to get somebody on board so I can give this job back to the person <laughs> who really knows how to do it and uh, by the end of March. So hopefully, we'll have somebody in this role uh, currently, there's only seven staff members in city communications. We've got three guys that kind of run Channel 2. Um, Channel 2 has some issues. A couple of, probably six weeks ago, we had to uh, go down during a business session. Um, Channel 2 is run on equipment that's 1995 technology. I mean, it's essentially a, imagine yourself on your computer using a 286 still. That's, that's what Channel 2 is. Joel and Damon and the guys do a great job of keeping that up. Um, the city managers were, were doing some uh, equipment uh, move out, so we're in the process of changing that technology and trying to bring that technology up to uh, up to par. Because right now, um, in my opinion, it's Joel keeps it together with bailing wire and duct tape. Um, that that's an improvement that'll happen. We've already hired a social media analyst. Uh, Mark Van Bale's been on board for probably a couple of weeks now. He's working with several departments. Um, that want to get into social media. Um, he's looking at our draft social media policy to make sure that uh, our city employees are protected and they know the rules of what they can and can't do. Um, you saw an example of a failed social media policy with Applebee's just uh, at St. Louis a couple of weeks with a young lady who posted something on Facebook about something that she got with a tip and ended up costing her a job, which the policy was, and Applebee's honestly did not they followed the policy, but they didn't handle it very good in communication-wise after that. 
um, they didn't kind of expect it to go viral like it did, and they, you know, they just kind of sat on it. So um, there's some things you can do to be proactive, and we're, we're moving that way. We've also uh, in the process of hiring a copywriter to help us with our the copywriting. Um, we've got an intern. We've got one lady who works on internal communications, and we've got uh, Joel and another lady who work on um, uh, all the web stuff. So two people in this entire city. Are doing the web stuff so it's we're really thin on communication staff so when we get our new director we get these two these two staff members that are on going for next year uh, full staff members it'll that'll really help because we'll we'll be increased we get the new equipment for channel 2 we'll move that direction um, one of the things that I've found um, and it ties to directly to this is our website especially for videos is not very conducive to videos um, when this, I mean, we had previously been looking at our uh, improvements for our website, and we've got we've got hundreds of videos on our website. Um, a lot of them date back to 2006, and there are all kinds of good videos. We've got videos on Swift Water Rescue, um, just in public safety. Just I looked up uh, mounted KCPD mounted patrol. We've got evident, trace evidence, CSI, fire prevention, lead poisoning prevention, domestic violence. Play it safe driving, seatbelt PSA, red light cameras. We've got all these great videos, but they're really hard to find on our website. You can't just type in the uh, search and be right there. So what we were, what we've been in the process of doing is changing to what I'll call a KC YouTube. And John has this uh, has been putting this web page together. And what it allows us to do is we've got um, categories on the left side. So. What, when you pull up this home page, you'll pull it up and you'll, you'll, you'll be right there. And the videos that are up there are the ones that we've just, the latest ones up. So if on the home page, you'll see the five or six videos that are latest ones up. If you want to search by categories, you've got categories on there. So you've got, if you want to look at the weekly reports, you can do them there. If you want to look at FYIKC, you can, um, you can look at them there. If you want to do arts or you want to look at council committees, uh, if you want to do health or infrastructure related, uh, police or public safety, you can just click on that. So we'll go to we'll go to public safety. It's interesting you were talking about break-ins and the keep your junk in your trunk. For, for those of you who have a trunk, um, we have a we have a PSA from 2010 that uh, t talks about auto break-ins. Um, it does need to be updated. It's got some stats from 2009 and it's got some stats from 2010. So we we've, we've been working with PD. Uh, KCPD will, will let Steve talk about their stuff. They've also got a YouTube channel. So what we've done is we've taken a bunch of their videos from their YouTube channel, put them onto ours. One of the issues we have here in the city is we have a lot of our videos on Granicus. Um, converting them from Granicus over to the YouTube style, each video takes about an hour. So it's very intensive to, to get these hundred. It's not like we can just click and move them over and done. There's some work that needs to be done technology-wise. And every time we transfer them, we lose a bit of um, um, quality on the videos. So um, we've, we've, we're working through that process. It's a slow process, but we've, it kind of ties in. So we want to play this auto, auto break-in video real quick. And I think it's only a couple of minutes. So if you, if you don't mind. Back to bailing wire and duct tape. We're good? We need volume. They haven't started talking yet. GPS units, 39 digital cameras, 150 stereos, and 32 iPods were pawned. In 2009, theft from autos and the related vehicle. Theft from autos is a problem that concerns all of us. In one week within the KC metro area, 100 GPS units, 39 digital cameras, 150 stereos, and 32 iPods were pawned. 
In 2009, theft from autos and the related vehicle damage was responsible for 25% of all the reported crime in Kansas City, Missouri. There are simple steps you can take to reduce your chances of becoming a victim. Thieves are known to break into a car just for the petty change in the console. So imagine how motivated they are when they see a GPS, iPod, cell phone, or laptop they could pawn. Be sure to remove any items of value from view to avoid becoming a target. Thieves most likely won't break into your vehicle just to see if there's anything of value. Nationwide each year, $1.255 billion in personal items and accessories are stolen from vehicles in about 1.85 million thefts. You can take an active role in preventing theft from other vehicles as well. Be cautious of those loitering in parking lots and report it if you see someone peering into cars. Be suspicious of someone selling electronics for a fraction of their value or if their story just doesn't make sense. Hey, where's my camera? Come on, come on, come on. Should you have a break-in, there are things you can do to improve your chances of getting your stuff back. Write down model and serial numbers of all your electronics. A great place to store it is on an internet-based email account like Yahoo or Hotmail. That way, if your computer is stolen, you can retrieve the information from any other computer. Also take note of identifiable marks, nicks, and scratches. I have a friend who uses white liquid paper to mark dots on all of his stuff even as golf clubs and as tennis rackets. In our next series, we'll talk about what to do if you become a victim of a property crime and how KCPD handles recovered property. I'm Shelley Gaddis, working with... So that, this is one way. We've, we can work this through the web, and then we can also program these, these public service announcements into our free time that we have on Channel 2. So that's one of the ways we're working. We're trying to increase our web presence and make it a little easier to see these videos and get to them. Um, and then we're also trying to, you know, we've got the, the issue of updating the videos and making sure that we, um, they're, they're current. Um, we don't want to do something that's got some, some old information. Um, so we'll work, we'll, we'll do that. We'll work with the police, the police department to try to make sure, and if, if the Crossroads and some of the creative folks want to help us, we'll definitely partner with them. So I'm going to throw it over to uh, Mr. Young and let him uh, talk about the police department and the public information. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Captain, welcome to the committee. Morning. Thank you. Um, as Pat said, we've been doing this for quite a while, basically. We, uh, we do have a, a production person who's uh, an employee of the police department who works out of a studio up at the academy. And uh, on about a weekly basis, he'll produce a new PSA. Uh, as Pat said, you know, they range from anything from uh, uh, crime prevention to recruitment to what not to do when you get pulled over and, and, and obviously a lot of other more lighthearted things as well. And whenever he does get one produced, uh, we'll send it to the city, and so they can put it on Channel 2. But then we'll also uh, put it on our YouTube channel, and then uh, Sarah Boyd, our social media guru, will tweet about it to let everybody know. So it's been pretty successful for us. Right. Any questions of the captain or, or Mr. Klein? So have these changes, Pat, been made to our website yet? Or no, they're, 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 not the on, they're not on live yet. We've, um, we're in the process that you can see here um, on the police one. He's got uh, several p police videos that we've taken from the police YouTube site, um, and we've moved those over. Um, he's also, we're also working on the categories and trying, you know, we've got sustainability, um, trying to group these into stuff that uh, makes sense. So when the citizens look at it, I mean, I I'm familiar with the city, so it, it, some of it may make sense to me, but we want to, we wanted to run it by some citizens and say, okay, you know, is this, is this kind of what, what makes sense for you or would you like to see these in different categories? So we're, you know, we're going to, we're going to put them through that way and then we'll, uh, we'll put them out on the web. It's not ready to go yet. Um, it's, it's just in its introductory stage, but it really tied in nicely when Councilman Sharp called last week and I said, well, you know, we're actually working on a similar path and trying to do it holistically. Once it's done, we'll probably send out a little tweet and put some stuff on our Facebook to, to announce it and uh, maybe a press release also. So uh, move in that direction. Well, we greatly appreciate your innovation on this and, and certainly appreciate uh, the police department's cooperation because this is a way that uh, we can really uh, help our citizens prevent crime from taking place in the first place. And we still have some dead space on Channel 2 from time to time. And, and certainly having these PSAs running, uh, you know, on a rotation uh, 
I think would be much more interesting to people and certainly much more helpful to people. Uh, any questions or witnesses? Yes, sir, Mr. Well, Vice Chairman. I would just add on to your comments uh, uh, from what you just said is that, yes, they're running on uh, Channel 2, but the YouTube version of these uh, really allow for people to just kind of go to them whenever they want. You know, uh, I, I can't tell you how much time I spend sometimes uh, when I'm just trying to unwind on YouTube watching video clips for, for all type of uh, things uh, that are appropriate. Of course, uh, are like old series and TV shows or things like that, but you can just pick them up. And so these type of uh, videos can certainly be played at community uh, meetings just right away. Uh, and so I am uh, excited to, to hear about this uh, as well and uh, look forward to the launch of it. Councilman Taylor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I really want to thank everybody for your hard work on this because this will make a difference. We uh, and we have a small example in another area within the city. We um, uh, on, on the BizCare website, our business assistance website, we had uh, reworked it with uh, communications and uh, part of the issue we were having in getting some of the new information out was the Granicus, uh, the issues with Granicus because the uh, what we found is we had some good informational videos that could have been sent out to a lot of our local chambers. They, they were ready to shoot them out to their members, but they were having difficulty with the Granicus. Versus, they said, why don't you just put this on YouTube and it'll, it'll get blasted out. And, and so that it, I think we're getting in the right direction with this. It'll make a difference. And we know it, it does make a difference because in that example with BizCare, I think we went from uh, when we reconfigured just that one part of the web page, for, to put all the business resources on one spot with the YouTube videos where we had instructional videos. We went in uh, the month before that switchover from about, what, three, two, 300 hits up to about 4,000 hits the next month. I mean, that's how dramatic it is because you make it available. So I, I'm really excited what this could do for getting information out in the public safety area and working with the police department, especially since you have already spent a lot of time creating some of these videos we don't need to start from scratch on some of this so it, it's a way of getting really blasting that information out and what we found is a, a lot of community groups will take that information and blast it out to their list as as we uh, unveil new uh, public safety videos so through, with the police department so I think it's a great collaboration and I just encourage you to keep uh, keep uh, keep at it and getting the information out thank you Klein, uh, Captain, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, when you actually roll these changes out to the web website, uh, uh, Pat, you might want to come back here okay. and, and uh, just show the screen uh, again. We'll, and we'll, we'll also get with uh, Councilman Markson and Glover and find out who the contacts were in the crossroads. I'll set up a meeting with our our producers and, and staff, and then get with them and figure out, you know, if we want to, you know how we want to do that you know we've got a we've got some standards and stuff that we've got to hit and sure. um, so we'll make sure that it's all done right and we'll try to come up with a, a campaign and in the meantime working it work continue to work on this well and if they can uh, come up with a catchy slogan you know that might help uh, uh, increase public interest in it but greatly appreciate uh, uh, everybody's work and certainly appreciate the staff's work uh, on this uh, dealing with some pretty antiquated equipment and, and uh, being uh, very short staffed. Staff's been amazing. I mean, you have, I mean, you just don't you don't you don't realize that they're short that short of staff because I mean, nothing messes up. So the communication staff's been really been good. Absolutely. Hey, Mr. Chair, if I could yes, sir. add one more thing yes, sir. on the uh, equipment. You mentioned that early on. I, I, if you haven't had a chance. Uh, you might take a quick tour of the communications department because it is it's it's I was amazed or, or shocked I guess and how how great a job that they do given the uh, antique equipment that we have and I think it wasn't that some of that at least donated at some point back in the yes, 90s so yes was, Time Warner Cable I believe donated some of the equipment so it's I mean it's imagine if you were working on your desktop at, and communication wise and you were using a 286 computer I mean it's Right. Yeah, it's that, I mean that's where that's what and you know we're in the process of changing that so um, it's good stuff. I mean there's we don't really have a studio. Um, these guys do. Um, Channel two doesn't have a studio. They've got um, a makeshift studio in Dennis's old office um, with some green screens up there. So any if you want to come down and look at it, you can. Um, you know there's there's some investment. The communication, the new communication director. One thing they really need to do is they need to focus on um, the, kind of the city brand 
across all the departments and make sure that we focus our communication so we're not sending out conflicting messages. And that, that's, I mean, having the, the equipment to do that's part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it almost, uh, I was thinking when I, I first saw it, uh, if anybody's been to the, uh, the Houston Space Center Museum where you see the old equipment for the, uh, the, the uh, moonwalk uh, back in the uh, 60s, it's, it's, it looks very similar. I mean, as far as how old the equipment is. So, I mean, it's amazing that we, do, the communications department has been able to kind of, uh, you know, use lots of uh, masking tape and, and, and keep this equipment running. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's something we need to look at long term because we really have to... People, uh, we've seen with YouTube and the web page uh, update that we've done in BizCure, people want to get their information online now. They don't necessarily pick up the phone. So either whether it's through Channel 2 or through our website, we really need to uh, invest in that, I think. When you look at the stuff online, for instance, I, I don't know if you've seen the Time to Be Well stuff that's been done um, with the, the health, the food show. Um, it's excellent. I mean, that the you can't tell that it's done on that. That I mean, it's written well. It's uh, videoed well. It's put together well. I mean, the production stuff is unbelievable. And he's got he's got a, a quick thing of it here. Those two the two shows that they've already uh, done. I mean, they're they're really done well. So the the production value and everything, even though that stuff. So if they get modern equipment, I don't know what they're going to do. It, it'll be unbelievable. Okay, well, th thank you again so much. Greatly appreciate it. Could you read uh, the uh, second item on, on the agenda, Madam Clerk? Status report on current uh, KCFD recruitment drive. Chief, sorry to keep you waiting so long. Uh, no problem. It was interesting. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and Public morning. Safety uh, Council uh, um, <clears throat> Committee. I, uh, I'm happy to present to you uh, our uh, current status of our, of our firefighter recruitment process and then in line with what was just said here in this last agenda item, I'll, if I uh, could take just a couple of minutes to give you a, a brief update on some uh, of our pilot projects and, uh, and uh, our membership program as well. So uh, we, are having, we are currently uh, uh, going through a uh, firefighter recruitment process and the open application period will end on uh, February 15th. Um, uh, currently, we have about uh, 400, uh, a little bit over 400 uh, applicants uh, who have uh, those applications have been vetted. Uh, and so uh, we know that we have at least 400 uh, people in the pool. But for those out there who are interested in a position, I don't want that to discourage them because we go through a, a process by which to um, evaluate those applicants. So uh, that information is, has been out in, in uh, local publications such as the call uh, Dos Mundos. It's been on ATA buses and, in, and on yard signs as well. Um, uh, but uh, what's important I think here is to uh, let people know uh, if people are interested in applying for that uh, job, uh, they can do so uh, uh, fairly easily. Uh, they can do so here at City Hall on the 12th floor uh, of City Hall at Human Resources Department, but, but also uh, easier access in, in the community uh, at fire headquarters at 635 Woodland uh, uh, on, the first, on the first floor, Suite 2100, uh, go in there, pick up an application, and those applications can be submitted uh, there as well. And then also at our uh, KCFD facility at 6750 um, uh, Eastwood Traffic Way. Uh, those applications are available out there and can also be submitted out there. Um, uh, the, uh, again, I want to remind folks that the uh, application period does end uh, in about 10 days, um, and it has been open for about six weeks. Um, if, I, if there are questions on that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have on those. Yes, sir. Uh, no question but comment, uh, and it is to commend you, Chief, for uh, your efforts in really getting out and promoting uh, the recruitment efforts. Uh, you've reached out to me personally many times for uh, follow-up information for individuals that you uh, knew that were interested in applying on different occasions, so I want to commend you uh, for that. Um, 400 uh, applicants uh, sounds very, very good. One of the things that has been... Um, 
part of my conversation with you is the recruitment of African Americans uh, and minorities on the, uh, the, uh, the force. Uh, and I know that you have uh, paid particular close attention to that, so I appreciate that. And then also would mention that uh, every Sunday for the past couple of weeks in my church bulletin at church, uh, we have had uh, the recruitment information in our church bulletin and uh, at our community meetings, we continue to help spread the, the word. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing about uh, when the recruitment has actually taken place outside of the application process. But um, more so, again, thank you for your personal efforts uh, and not just coming to report some information, but I know personally you've, you've been uh, really out working hard for this too so thank you well I, I appreciate that and uh, also to I mean there's a, a school that I, I uh, ever since I was uh, appointed as the interim chief um, <coughs> at Gladstone School over in the northeast part of the city uh, I attend that on a monthly ba uh, attend a, an after school meeting actually it starts about five o'clock uh, on a monthly basis, and uh, actually got uh, was able to do some recruitment there, and and got a and got a, a lot of good play at that school as well, and uh, got in on a kind of a ground floor effort there with the Link organization um, to uh, go there and attend those monthly meetings, and and got some uh, like I said some good very good play in, in uh, recruiting from that location uh, on a personal level as well. So, but I appreciate your kind words and. Uh, we can always do better. I do also want to mention um, that uh, that the city we the we w are giving preference to Kansas City, Missouri residents uh, during that hiring process. Uh, if I could take just a, a very brief uh, moment of your time, just to let you know that uh, we will be putting out a flyer in the uh, April uh, water bill about our. Uh, membership program for our ambulance uh, service uh, and so uh, citizens can expect to see uh, a flyer in that in the water in the water in the April water bill so that that will uh, occur and we encourage people to do that it's a it's a very uh, inexpensive way to ensure that uh, somebody isn't hit with a large uh, bill for ambulance service at an unexpected time um, so then, that, that is for the membership plan where, as I recall, for $59 a year, it covers any out-of-pocket costs for your entire family for uh, uh, That is absolutely correct. Service. Out of a anything that the insurance doesn't, in right. your insurance doesn't cover. Right. Um, then very briefly on our pilot programs, uh, uh, I, we have been repeating, uh, I'm sorry, reporting uh, recently on our on our pilot programs uh, we have suspended our pilot program on BLS uh, transfers um, uh, we looked at that for 90 days uh, evaluated it we're going to uh, reevaluate that when we uh, are able to look at technology partnerships with our hospitals and um, in, a, in an effort to try to schedule those uh, maybe uh, much like I was uh, the way I described it at one of our meetings, I was out of town and, and I called Super Shuttle uh, for a pickup at the airport and uh, they said, well, you called outside your four-hour window to make sure that we'd be here at 10, that we could pick you up at 1030, but they said, let me check. So I heard some clicking on the, on the keyboard and they said, yeah, we'll be there at 1030. And I, I, I thought to myself, well, you know, if, if Super Shuttle can do it, why can't we partner with the hospitals for them to get online, schedule a pickup? And uh, and and make it a lot easier for everybody, so that so that our pickups for non-emergency transfers are timely. Um, so we're looking at that, and then we may re-implement that that program. Uh, I also I believe uh, my folks were here last week or the week before and reported on an ALS uh, pumper pilot program, and we reported uh, that we our target gate date was uh, Sunday, which is the 10th, and I'm sorry to say that we're not going to hit that target date, but we're only going to miss it by two weeks. Uh, we, we um, in, in developing the training and the uh, documentation section for those uh, ALS runs that we run with an ALS pumper, 
uh, to transfer that documentation to the transport unit is going to take a little bit of, of training for our personnel. And we want to go make sure that, that, we're, that everybody is uh, well informed about that process before we go online. Um, but we met yesterday, uh, are very comfortable that we'll be able to hit that target date of uh, the 24th. Uh, so, like I said, I apologize that we didn't hit the 10th, but we, we will hit it two weeks later, and uh, that, that process or that project will start on the 24th. So, and that was to uh, better uh, uh, determine how the data, the patient data, will be transferred from the uh, paramedic pumper to the transport unit. Exactly, that patient care report, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, uh, we're talking about medical medical care, and we want to make sure that those records are transferred properly and that all is included in the master ticket. And uh, the uh, plans still call for one of those pumpers being up north at about 111th and North Oak and the other being out south on Hillcrest Road uh, between 87th and, and Bannister? That is correct. And then we're looking, we are actually doing some computer modeling. Every time I say computer modeling, I look directly at Councilman <laughs> uh, Reed because uh, I remember the, his look of disgust when, when he asked if, if we could model those things. And, uh, and uh, so every time I mention that, I, I remember that. And so, uh, so we're actually doing some modeling to, to not only uh, computer model uh, three, Station 3, where you mentioned it, North Oak, uh, 111th and North Oak, and uh, 95th and Hillcrest, but also to model additional pumpers if this 90-day pro pro program works like we believe it will work. We're modeling other pumpers around the city to, to determine uh, what impact those will have um, as well. So uh, we're looking at a, a kind of a, a, a ring effect of the city uh, to provide a ALS care in, a, in a, a somewhat of a ring fashion, if you will. In some of the harder to, to serve areas. In some of the harder served areas, correct. And, and I know uh, we're um, considering some expansions and improvements in our various mutual aid agreements with with other uh, jurisdictions that could also help in that. Uh. that. That is correct. We'll be b before this committee uh, very soon, uh, and I'll be able to lay out those, uh, right. those uh, plans as well. Super. Well, I'm very, uh, very pleased to uh, uh, hear that uh, we'll have the inserts going into the water bill uh, in water bills in April, because that's a great way to, to reach all of our uh, um, residents to let them know about the uh, ambulance membership program, which can uh, uh, save them some real money if, if, if they need the service. And, and uh, a lot of people think their medical insurance uh, covers the whole thing and then are uh, sadly uh, uh, surprised to see that they've got a co-payment that, that could be several hundred dollars. So it certainly uh, is a way to uh, give them peace of mind and not have to worry about being hit with uh, big out-of-pocket costs. And uh, uh, I'm glad you're uh, really studying how to better schedule these non-emergency uh, transfers uh, uh, for when people are being released from hospitals uh, to either nursing homes or homes. So uh, uh, if we do uh, uh, re-implement that program, it, it can get uh, better utilization. Uh, and if I could, I'd like to go back just a little bit on the hiring process, because yes, some people may may have gotten the impression, well, we've had 400 applicants, so gosh, why would I worry? Because you know the about applying, because they're just going to be snowed under. But you're not just going to be hiring a couple of positions. This w could you kind of tell Actually, people how a, the hiring process? That's a, that's an excellent point, and and I really did fail to mention that this list is a two-year list, and not only is that uh, important because it's a two-year list, but because of the timing of this list, um, we know that, that we ha there was a lull in, in uh, the fire department's hiring between, and we didn't hire a single person between 1980 and 1985. Well, our, at, at, when we started hiring, we, har we started hiring a great deal number of people in, in 85 and, and throughout the next six or seven years. So uh, we are, uh, uh, have a, a, a swell of people who are are ready to retire, and so that list will be. This list, I expect, will be a very good list for to be on, as well as the next probably two to three lists because of the way of our of our hiring cycle. Uh, so I yeah I appreciate you mentioning that because it does seem like like oh my gosh how am I gonna how am I going to uh, arrive at the or you know 
uh, be at the top of a list of 400 people uh, and, and I'm only one person. Uh, don't be discouraged by that at all. This is a list that lasts for two years. We're giving preference to Kansas City, Missouri residents. Uh, uh, and um, in, in addition, we're also giving preference to paramedics, but that does not uh, should not deter anybody who is not a paramedic to apply for the job. Uh, that's our, you know, we have that, we have that tr a real need on the fire department right now for paramedics who are cross-trained as firefighters. Uh, but you make an excellent point that this list is going to last for two years and it will be a very good list to be on. And where can they go to apply again? I'm sorry, the, uh, they, they can go to Firehead, the easiest places out in the public our fire headquarters at 635 Woodland Suite 2100 that's the ground floor there it's very very easy to get to and at 6750 Manchester uh, traffic I'm not I'm, I apologize Sweet. not Manchester traffic way uh, Eastwood traffic way and that is also on the ground floor there uh, go in there and uh, through the glass doors there they pick up an application and, and turn it in in the same place they do have to do it in person. They can't do it online. Is that uh, yeah, that, that's not available yet. Uh, hopefully it will be soon, and, and I know that HR is working with that. And <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and, and they are working on that. So, so not yet, uh, but, but it will be at some point. And what are the basic qualifications? Uh, um, right now, the, uh, it's a high school diploma. Uh, that's basically it. We, we, now, we vet the, the applicants much uh, in, in detail after that process, but the MQs are really a high school diploma, and like I said, a preference is given to Kansas City, Missouri residents, and then we will give a preference to uh, paramedics uh, for some of that hiring uh, process, uh, but we also know that that's a challenge for our entire list to do that for our entire an entire list. So, um, so the so the, rec the the minimum qualifications are uh, are not set very high. Uh, we want to cast a wide net, and then we want the opportunity then to screen those people who can work as a team because we know that the, 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 a, a person who can work in a, as a team member, uh, a part of our team, is, is uh, the most valuable employee that we have. And so we've had a lot of success over the last 10 to 12 years really focusing on that team effort. Any questions of the Chief? Yes, sir. Councilman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chief, I, I echo what... Uh, Councilman Reed said we appreciate your, your effort getting out on this recruitment effort all, all across the board. Uh, one area that we've uh, have been working on uh, is uh, uh, veterans issues. And we, we now have a veterans hiring preference at the city across uh, departments. Have you, uh, as part of this recruitment, I, I would imagine that at returning vets from, especially Afghanistan, current vets from Afghanistan, Iraq are trained in some cases uh, have some of the best training uh, out there that, that would be uh, valuable for our city. Ha has this been part of the recruitment process, or if it hasn't, can we, you know, reach out to the uh, different branches? And it, it, it actually has. We, uh, in addition to those uh, flyers that I mentioned, that you know we put out at gyms and and uh, local community, we've uh, also approached those. But we've also regionally. Uh, worked with uh, folks who have a very good connection to the veterans coming back. And, and veterans, not only is it a city preference, it's also listed as a preference for uh, firefighter, uh, for veteran status as a preference um, for employment as a firefighter as well. And you mentioned that, that they are very well trained. There are paramedics there that are coming back that have been, uh, you know, battle tested, if you will. Um, and, and so uh, the, actually on a national and a reg regional and a national level, uh, they are working to uh, make a uh, or to allow for a reciprocation process for that license to actually um, be used as a national registry license, and so there are some hurdles that have to have to go through. But you you are exactly right. Those are, are you know it's a it's a it's a good opportunity. It's a good resource to tap, and and we do give preference to that. Um, and so uh, I don't know how much success we're going to be I, have with that um, on this on this go around. But I do know that we're actively looking at that with some of our regional partners who who have are very well connected to the veteran uh, uh, population. Great, thank you. Appreciate it. And Chief, let me ask you about one other pilot program that I know was uh, scheduled to start this month, and that's to upgrade the training of our emergency medical technicians so they can provide more advanced uh, life-saving procedures to our citizens. 
That is that is ongoing. I, have, I failed to mention that one as well. I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, that, that we do. I, I can't remember the exact date that it started, but it, I believe it's been going on for at least three weeks, maybe. Uh, and it, but I do know when it will end. It will end in the middle of March, and then they'll have to do some clinical hours. So we should see those folks uh, ready to uh, be able to provide that ALS uh, service. And, and it's a it's a uh, when I say ALS, I, I need to be clear that we're not talking about the paramedic level uh, on a national protocol level. It's, it's uh, deemed to be advanced life support, but there have to be some internal discussions about that. But that uh, will we'll end the didactic part of that education in March, and I believe it's mid-March, um, and then they'll go out to some, they'll, do, they'll have to have some clinical hours in a hospital and on ambulances, and then shortly after that, they'll be uh, available to do it. And those, those uh, locations are uh, at our fire station number 45 in the Southland on Blue Ridge, and at our, um, uh, a pumper company, uh, our pumper company number 44 at I-29 and Berry Road. Uh, and so those were those uh, two locations at the intermediate level are slated uh, to occur first. And the one on Blue Ridge is in the Martin City area where? Yes, and and it's also uh, uh, because training costs are so high because uh, because of the way we train uh, that we still have to provide service and we're paying overtime to do that training, this particular uh, project did not require that. We were actually uh, working off of a grant, a $287,000 grant which pays for all of the backfill and the education for that. And so we were very lucky to have that, and, and we're uh, seeking more grants because, because the training is so expensive with overtime. This is a great program that, that I think has huge potential to save lives throughout the city. And uh, um, I, I think the pilot, I'm confident the pilot program will, will prove the worth of it, just like the pilot program of paramedics and pumpers. And, uh, so I think we've got some great things uh, in the works that are really going to improve emergency medical care throughout the city. Uh, so really appreciate your leadership on this, Chief, and, and uh, appreciate uh, what you're doing uh, personally to uh, uh, recruit folks from, from throughout our city because we do want to have a diverse workforce and, and uh, want to give everyone an opportunity to apply. And I, I think it's a great career, yeah. and I've certainly talked to some people uh, to, to urge them to seriously consider it. So, well, I appreciate it, and, and only because you, you, you thank me. I, I, I need to. While uh, I happen to be sitting in in the chair at the time, I can tell you that the local union uh, 42 has been working with us uh, diligently on these pilot projects, and it's not been easy. Um, it's not been an easy process, but they have been. They have continued uh, to be at the table and work with us to, to develop these pilot projects. And so, uh, I want to give them a, a big thank you as well. Uh, they've been a, a good partner through this uh, pilot project. Okay. Well, thank you, Chief. Uh, there's no further business to come before the committee, so I'd like to thank the committee members and everyone for being here. Uh, this